Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How you doing today? All right, today um, I want to show an answer. Um, probably one of the top three questions that I get on the Renai tankless heater is the wiring of an external unit. An internal unit you don't have to worry about because it comes with a six foot plug, three, uh, you know, grounded, uh, two wire that you plug in into an outlet. But on an external unit, either you're going to do a pigtail, one of these, or you're going to hardwire it, you know, with seal tight or liquid tight wiring. Okay, this is actually my tankless. And today we're doing a video, and I'll just show you quickly on the Yugo battery backup, which I have connected already. And I needed to make my cord longer, so I figured let's do this video and let's get this thing straight here. Let's do this video and explain exactly how to do it. Now, wiring the inside of this unit would be the same whether you're using the pigtail or if you're going to use hard wire from a disconnect switch or a switch, a pull, uh, pull disconnect, switch on the wall. Remember, don't use your breaker. You're not supposed to be using your breaker. We're wiring this with the pigtail into an in-use cover. So, when you get the tankless, you're gonna find these two wires, a black and a white wire, they appear very thin. But there's a piece of metal tape and a piece of blue tape covering these two. Remember, I already had this wired. And it actually says 110 volt. This is the power outlet. This is the knockout right here. Let's get this zoomed in a little bit. That's the knockout. This other rubber knockout right here is for the low voltage controller wire. So let's go about wiring. Let's get this camera correct here. And let's go about wiring this thing. As you can see, it comes in through this rubber knock. There'll be, a rubber, there'll be a rubber grommet here. It's a black and a white wire that wires in into the back here of the PC board, which has a transformer which steps everything down. So you're going to be using these two wires, and you're going to ground it to one of this part of the chassis. And if you notice on the chassis, there's the ground symbols. That's where it's very important to ground the unit. Now, what I like to do with a pigtail, because you need to have a disconnect. I prefer the pigtail. Why? Because if you have a power outage, you can plug it into a generator, or if you have the battery pack up, it's going to be plugged into that anyway. So that's why I prefer a pigtail with the in-use cover. What I like to do is I use, let's grab it, um, I use 16 gauge two wire with the ground. And I use one of these cord grip connectors that has the rubber grommet inside of it. Then I take a piece, and the wire is roughly about 3 eighths of an inch, this gray wire. I take 3 eighths of an inch shrink um, yeah, shrink tubing, and I shrink it on to the wire. Now, you need to open up this hole. This hole here is a European hole. It will not fit our half-inch knockout, our half-inch fitting. So, I've already done that. I've already opened up the hole prior because this was a working tankless. So, as you could see, it will fit in there. It'll fit in there perfectly. So, first thing I like to do is put a stake on or a crimp on one of the blue ones. I put it onto the green wire. So, let me just pan this out a little bit. I put it onto the green wire. So, let's cut this because we're going to cut it down just a tad to crimp it on. Now, it's very, 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 very important to have a ground. So let's get this thing crimped on. And that's it right there. Boom. Crimped on. So now that it's crimped on, I'll get my lock nut out of my pocket. 
fish this through. Get the lock nut on. Now remember, this is the same thing if you're going to use um, liquid type or seal type. All right, tighten that up. Now, basically, I'm going to take the green wire. Well, let's get the let's get these things straightened up first because I got more room with this. Can we see here? Yep, we can still see. Okay, we're going to take our first wire nut. Now you can give a little bit more extra if you wanted to. White to white, black to black. And then down to the ground, right on the chassis. Get that good and snug. Okay, so now there's your there's your wiring for the power. Now, low voltage. Low voltage comes to, zoom in here, comes to these two screws here and here. And it says, terminals for controller. Now, this is for a V series and an RL series. If you're doing the RUR series, the Sensei, where it has the new PC board without the dip switches on the bottom. So that's going to be for your MC195 US controller or your Wi Fi. You're going to get this little white plug, and that's going to get plugged into the bottom of the PC board. So this, this control wiring is for the V or the RL series only. Okay, it doesn't matter what, um, doesn't matter what uh, color you put where, all it's doing is it's sending a signal back to the controller, and that controller is inside my laundry room. Also, the beauty about these is when I come and service this, these units, and I'm no one's home, I can just take these wires off and put my own controller on here. And yes, we are under a tarp. It is extreme. Of course, I've picked the day, the only day that it hasn't been raining. And the sun is just beating down on me here. So, then I just tuck up. I like to leave a bit of extra wire. And then just tuck up the wire right inside here. Now, I'm not going to cover this up or nothing because we're going to be going into the Yugo battery backup next. Okay, now that it's wired, you should hear the... If you hear that, that's the water servo valve opening. It just proved itself. And that's it. That is the complete wiring. This, um... Uh, controller cable is um, 18 to red and white I carry 500 feet of it that is the perfect because it's solid it's not um, stranded and that's it and that's your wiring now it's all nice and sealed nothing's gonna get up in there except you know this thing here so okay all right I hope this was helpful and uh, I hope it answered all your questions. Oh, one more question, which also is, excuse me, one more uh, explanation from the questions that I've been getting. This yellow wire right here, okay? You have this yellow wire that goes down to this black little rubber piece. Let me zoom in here. Okay, you see that right there? And it comes down here to the bottom. Okay, that is a water sensor. If water gets into this chassis and gets into here, it shuts the tankless down. 
So you can actually pop this out by pushing it straight up. It's in a rubber grommet. And you can blow on it or you can hit it with just a little air or you can hit it with a hairdryer, but don't keep it on so long. And what that'll do is it'll dry it up and it'll make the tankless fire. But if water got in it, this is a pretty good sealed unit. You could have a problem with a leaking heat exchanger. So that's what this yellow wire is for. That was a, another uh, quite a few uh, questions that I've gotten. Okay. All right. I hope this was, um, hope this you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope this was helpful for people. All right. Uh, next, the next video that will be posted will be this uh, Yugo. Um, I already did an unboxing. Now we're going to be doing a test where we're going to simulate power outage, have the Yugo turn on and give ourselves hot water. Okay. Um, you all be safe out there and I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.